Hello, Dr. Noob here. So, today's tutorial is based on two requests in my comment sections from uh, Benofi and a random guy, which is, by the way, a cool name. So, both were telling me to um, do a tutorial when you pick up an item that you have more abilities and also based on weapons so that you have different weapons. So I thought I will enhance the monk that we already have now with the punch. Let's start. So if we would like that the monk send some projectile, in my case I thought it would be cool if he could shoot these fireballs here then uh, we need to have an additional game object than we had when we only had the melee weapon. So in here, you remember, in the first part of our tutorial, the character handle weapon has a melee weapon. Now, for the second one, we need a projectile weapon which in our case will be invisible because I have already my animation, which will be something like a kick that uh, will spawn the projectile. And uh, besides of that, we also need the projectile. So there are two objects to create this time. So the first part, let's start with the projectile weapon, which I will do exactly like I did the last time. I will create an empty object and name it something like Fireball Weapon. So, and we add another component which is Weapon, but it must be a projectile weapon. So here it is. The settings are very similar to the first part, so you can say, yeah, he should uh, shoot automatically. In my case, I will do a semi-auto and I will do, because of my animation, a small uh, delay before using it. And I would like to have at least two seconds in between before I can shoot it again. A magazine. So if you would like, you could also have a magazine, which so you can pick up uh, the bolts or something like that. In my case, I will leave that as is. And now the position for it. That is uh, quite important because I don't want that he shoots it from here. So he will do something like a kick in my animation and then it will spawn from here on. So I should have that attached to a good value. So as you see here, my small problem that I have is whatever I put in here, I have no clue where it starts. So there is a little cheat for you from Dr. Noob. And that's, you see that here, I can just find out what a good so something like that so 2.2 two, no 2 dot 2 yeah so that would be a good uh, distance so exactly the same value I copy and paste in here and put that back to zero again so now we know where he will start with it Um. There is no hands position, there is no special movement in here, and the animation start parameters. So under my animation, I have already this monk shoot, and I have already set up one which is called a shoot. So I will use that and integrate it here. But uh, the last time we did the use animator parameter, this time I just want it to start with the parameter and that's it. So good. That's it. So that's the setting for the projectile weapon. Okay, 
Now what is missing is actually to shoot the projectile itself. There is another component which is the MM Simple Object Pooler. So this is the one that will handle the pooling of uh, of the web of the projectiles. Uh, we don't have the projectile, so let's create it first. So to create the projectile, I already told you that I will use these fireballs in here. As you maybe remember, Unity is so cool with that one. You just take these three sprites, you drag and drop it in here, and he automatically has the knowledge that you will create an animation. So I will put here an animation, and that would be something like um, projectile fly animation. So, and if I click on it, then you see it's a little bit fast. Let's go to 8. And that looks better for me. So, now we have here our object with the animation. And um, then we should add him different new scripts. So, first of all, it's a projectile. So we add that. That's more or less it. What you can tweak around here is the speed. So if you think that 200 is too much, then you can put it back to something smaller. Yeah, that's the first thing. And now, um, even if it's a projectile, he should do some damages and the logic of well of everything in unity but uh, applies very much to the corgi engine is that you need to have a collider so let's do a collider and it would be the circle collider so now that we have here the circle collider that makes sense the size of it and um, now you can start to interact with other objects in the game. Now what we want to do with this projectile, maybe you want to trigger something or in this case you want to create a damage. So a damage on touch. And this damage on touch you may know from our older tutorials about the enemies. So what happens if you touch the enemy? In my case, um, a 10 is a good value for the damage that he should cause. And the target layer should be enemy, because I want him to um, shoot on enemies. But maybe, maybe, you want also to have uh, platforms. Let's say if you want to open a gate or something like that and you have some platforms you can use both of them. In my case and for this tutorial it's enough if I just put enemies. So let's save that. Um, but before we go further we should make sure that we have a prefab. So that is the Projectile Firebolt. So if we go here to our prefabs, then we can make a prefab out of it. Very well, that's it for the projectile. Okay, now let's stitch everything together here. So we go back to our monk with our fireball game object which has everything set up and we need now to add our projectile fireball to the object pooler pool i have never heard that in that relation pool for me pool is something to jump and swim in so we take that in here and now we have the projectile fireball and the next logical step, like with the punch, 
I take that fireball out and make a prefab out of it and I delete it in here because I don't need it anymore. So now that we have the um, fireball prefab here, we should also add him to the character handle secondary weapon. So we, we move this fireball in here as our initial weapon. So how does it work? We have here the first weapon and we have here the second weapon. And if we go here to our project settings and to the input manager, then you see in here that our player one shoot is the button E. And for the secondary weapon, then it's the player one secondary shoot. And here is left alt, but in my case, I have also um, the button M in here. So if I click E, then he should do the punch. If I click M, then he should shoot something. Let's try that out. So yes, E is doing it. And look at that. He shoots fireballs. Okay, so the second part of this video is to make something like an upgrade system. So in my case, I have here on the environment, I can go and decide which of these sprites should be the upgrade sprite. So I think that this, this one looks good. So I take this one, put it in here, and so this will be my upgrade object. So, what do we do now? We should first, as always, if you want to interact with anything, in my case I would like that the monk goes in here and then he picks that up, so I definitely need a collider. So that's the circle collider. Yes, and let's... Come on. Let's do a bigger radius. Very well. Good. Now we have it, but we should do something with it. So he should pick up something. So we have here the pickable. Pickable, and now you see pickable action, item, jetpack, and so on. And we have a pickable weapon. So let's take this weapon here and let's create also a weapon for it, so an upgrade. Let's go now to our prefabs and we take this punch level 2 in here and um, let's do some things here. Let's say I want that there is no time between uses and I would like uh, no the damage is the same but uh, the melee damage area timing should be something like let's say something 10 seconds I know it doesn't make sense but I just want it to really pop up that we have an upgrade here and the melee damage area let's do a circle which is three by three from the middle so that's a super punch i don't have the animation for it but yeah well it's not that bad so now we have here the pickable weapon and now i can move this weapon to here Let's try that out. I hope I have not missed something. So let's first of all wait until we are killed. At the moment you see the rectangle red here. So let's show it again. You see a small, uh, small red one. Now I have picked it up and now you see the circle and it is 10 seconds long. 
Huh? So now we have the upgrade. But let's add now another pickable weapon. Because I would like to have also a second fireball. So fireball level 2. Uh, the fireball level 2 we would like that is automatic. The delay is okay and there is zero in here. So now we have the second weapon. We go back to our upgrade and move the fireball to in here. So now if we pick up that object here then he should upgrade our punch but he should also open uh, upgrade my fireball. But you see here the weapon ID, the handle weapon ID is at the moment one. That's because that's our first weapon in here. Very important, I should put the two in here. Um, again, it has to do with the character handle weapon. That will be the ID one. And you need to make sure that the can pick up weapons is active. And this one would be the uh, the number two which you need to make sure also for that one okay let's try that out so at the moment we can shoot every two seconds let's go in here he picks it up we now we have an upgrade here and the same for the punch. Perfect. Is it enough? No, it's not enough. Let's do another thing. Um, a random guy asked me if he can make a double jump or something like that. And yes, for the same object you can add a component which is... If you go here to jump then you have here the character jump override. That means that he just overrides the basic values in here. So I can make now here a double jump. And oh, first of all, we need to make sure our monk, if he can jump how much? One time, okay, very well. So we start with it, we can shoot that one up and jump, he can only jump one time. Let's go in here and now he can jump twice. Very well, that's it for today. So thank you very much again and see you next time. Bye.